Hello everyone and welcome to this first virtual chapel assembly for 2021. Happy New Year! This week's chapel assembly is about the Epiphany. The Epiphany is when we remember the three wise men visiting the infant Jesus. And now we will hear the Gospel reading of the day. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chiefs, priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, Go and search diligently for this child and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of, and there ahead of them, when the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The word of the Lord. This story shows us that God is not distant, silent or remote. God is with us personally in the very person of Jesus. When Jesus speaks, we hear God speaking. When we see the face of Jesus, just like the Magi did, it is God's eyes that we look into. No one is outside the loving gaze or embrace of God through the person and presence of Jesus. The Christmas story and the Nativity calls us to remember and celebrate the mystery and the reality that God is with us in the most personal and intimate way possible. We've got to remember that God is no longer distant, remote or silent. Saint Paul says this in his letter to the Colossians, Christ is in you. When the shepherds at Jesus' birth looked at Jesus, they saw somebody like themselves who later called himself the Good Shepherd. When these three wise men offered their gift of gold, frankincense and myrrh, they too saw someone like themselves who later said, yes, I am king. What we have to do is we have to look at Jesus ourselves. Who or what do we see? Do we see ourselves? Do we see somebody who is just like us? It's exciting and maybe a little bit scary, but it is true. We are in 2021. In my head, that still feels like the far distant future. And even now, when I write down the date, I still write down 2020, and then I cross it out. Have you got a New Year's resolution? Or, well, it's not too late to think of one. Cliché or not, deciding to be better is a good thing. And to help you get started, I've got some ideas. However, 
When you create your New Year's resolution, think of something that is achievable. Rome wasn't built in a day and progress isn't linear. You can have ups and downs. I suggest starting something small and focusing on one goal at a time. The best resolutions are the ones that you keep and these are the ones that usually you can keep. Number one, stop procrastinating. This year focus on getting things done promptly and without hesitation. Get rid of your distractions and push yourself to work instead of scrolling through YouTube for hours. I know I'm guilty of it too, but I do my work first. Number two, get better sleep. I know it can be hard to turn off your mobile phones, to not look at social media, but it is important to get a full night's sleep. You may find that this is the only downtime that you're going to have in the full working day. But getting those hours of sleep is more important than just watching one more episode on Netflix. Sleep affects us a lot more than we know. If you don't get enough sleep, not only will you feel bad, but you look bad too. It causes bad skin and it even affects our bodily systems. Number three. Work on a positive outlook and attitude. I know not everyone, especially in these winter months, can have a positive outlook when it's so dark. We don't have some amazing park near us that we can just stroll every evening. We can't take long walks at the beaches. But even 15 minutes of peace can make our day 10 times better. I, be I began to do this throughout this year during times of stress and it shaped my day. You could be going for a walk, listening to music, writing, simply enjoying the environment or even praying. All of these make a positive difference in your life. Number four, appreciate life a little more. In 2020, gratitude was quite the topic of that year. Every Thursday evening we would clap for the NHS. We would give our respect to key workers. Even people who, as jobs we rejected before, delivery drivers, Tesco delivery drivers, Amazon workers, supermarket workers, even those people that work in takeaways but we gave them our gratitude. And as a nation, as a people, as a person, it made us feel a lot happier and a lot more humble. We should not stop this gratitude. I've made it a priority at least once a day to say thank you to two or three people that have made my life a bit better. It has made me reflect on the good things that have happened in my life and it's made me more humble that I can't do it alone. And finally, I would like to end with a prayer. Let's remember we are in the Holy Presence of God. Lord, you make all things new. You bring hope alive in our hearts and cause our spirit to be born again. Thank you for this new year, for all the potential it holds. Come and kindle in us a mighty flame, so that in our time many will see the wonders of God and live forever to praise your glorious name. Amen. Saint Joseph, pray for us. St. John Baptiste de La Salle, pray for us. Live Jesus in our hearts forever. Thank you.
Kairab, could you tell us what have we been doing this lesson? What have we been working on at the end here? So we have been reflecting, we have been learning about reflecting on our year and we've been learning about character traits. So we're doing um, LORIC, leadership, organisation, resilience, initiative, communication and we've also been doing our news resolution. Fantastic. So could I ask a volunteer to tell us um, your New Year's resolution for next year? Yes, go ahead. Um, to stop playing a lot and do, do lots of learning. Fantastic. Could I have another one, please? To improve myself all around and to make a difference in the school. Fantastic. Yes, at the back, Joshua. My New Year's resolution is to think of one. Is to think of one. That's a good New Year's resolution. Can I have somebody else? And Kyra. My New Year's resolution is to help my family um, for anything that they're going through. Okay, lovely. And Horatio. Yeah, really, really nice. Okay, so um, SJC, I challenge you to think of your own New Year's resolutions um, for the new year and to think about how you can improve on last year. Thank you very much and bye-bye. <laughs>